It's the Awake Space Astrology Podcast. I'm Lori Rivers with you here to help you with some inspiration to get those aspirations out into the world. All right, we got a wild week, my friends. It's it's some crazy astrology and it's just getting the pressure built for us to be ready for October, which is right around the corner, starts next week. Um... And it's the month I've been warning you about for, oh, I don't know, about 18 months. So in this episode, I'm going to talk about a couple of things. Uh, I'm talking about that mini moon that has everybody yapping and wondering and speculating. And I talk about what I think it means. We also have a comic coming up and I bring that up. Um, exciting times. Um, what a year. And you got to remember, we're still in a transition phase. We're not at a final encore, say, you know, while well, we're in the final encore of Pluto, but it's, we're still in a transition. And September is, is building the pressure for October. And October is a pressure cooker that releases on Halloween and all, all souls day as well. So it's, it's just getting interesting folks. We're not even to the exciting part yet. I know, I know more to be thrilled about. So grab your coffee, grab your tea, get your hot cocoa. It is fall in the Northern hemisphere. It's spring in the Southern hemisphere. I know we have listeners from all over the world. So grab your beverage of choice and whether we're driving to work or we're laying down at the end of a long day or we're at the gym and working out doing, or doing a hot girl walk, looking cutesy, being considerate being oh so demure let's do it together we can fold laundry we can wash the dishes we can take the kids to school and then we can hang out and just chill together while we drink a cup of coffee um i talk about that new moon coming up on october 2nd um i talk about tim walls and why i think he's a cancer rising and how i think the debate will go and some of the things i'm worried about i talk a little bit about the middle east i give you the rundown of what i think is going to be in the headlines remember i wrote those all you know for the september magazine so they were being finished in august and and like september 1st so a lot of the things have come to pass like the celebrity being exposed music industry person we have p diddy and other people um which by the way i talked about in the patron only podcast you can find that if you're at the five dollar level and up um all sorts of crazy stuff make sure you read the show notes that gives you all the linky poos to everything else um yeah it's a wild week so let's get through it together all right we've got another wild week and i remind you that this is a setup (laughs) it's a setup for october because i've been warning you about october for over a year and a half that is the most intense month All the way through October into basically the 2nd of November. That is the most intense time of 2024. Because we'll have Mars and Cancer in opposition to Pluto and Capricorn. But first we got to finish September. And in this last week, there's plenty going on. Plenty going on. So we've had the equinox. It's Libra season. Get ready for some sweater weather. (laughs) <laughs> sweater weather um it's not quite sweater weather where i am in the daytime but uh, a hoodie feels good at night but um that mo- the the equinox actually happened as the moon was in gemini so we had a beautiful relationship between the sun and the moon it was in a trine that's an easy aspect and by easy i mean the energy is unrestricted And that kind of kicks off a gossipy time. This fall will be full of rumors and rumor had it. (laughs) A lot of it. We're going to be sorting through what's fact and what's fiction all the way through the election and beyond because people are going to be full of it. Um, 
this week, there's some wild stuff going on. Oh, it's a little bit crazy, my friends. So as I record this early Sunday or early Monday morning, I didn't get it done on Sunday because I was busy troubleshooting my computer. If you've had some tech problems, <laughs> if you've had some tech problems, and I know I'm not the only one, I had a couple friends struggling on the same night as I, um, like my camera and my mic weren't being recognized on my computer. This is not an old computer. Were my drivers up to date? Yes, they were. Did I sit down and troubleshoot? Yes, I did. I spent hours on it. Like I finally had to go to the manufacturer's website and do a hardware scan. And then I figured out, well, it was a driver. It was the most recent update on one of my drivers. And so I had to restore it to the last one and then boop, everything worked. Ha ha ha. Joke in a box, Lori. So it is like 1.44 a.m. on Monday where I'm at. <laughs> so the podcast is it's going to be out a little later than normal. Or maybe I'll just do this in one shot and I won't do it in segments. I don't know. It's a wild week. So you might have some tech glitches. Don't Don't be too upset about them. I didn't freak out. I was a little frustrated, but very proud of myself. Very proud. Venus has moved into Scorpio. I'll talk a little bit about that and get rid of some of the pop astrology bullshit around Venus and Scorpio because they're all, they're all going to make it about sex basically. And, uh, it's a lot more than that. It's a lot more than that. Everybody's going for the clicks. Everybody's going for the views, you know? Um, so yeah, I had a great webinar on Saturday, nice full house full of people wanting to learn how to unlock the secrets of their birth charts. A uh, great, great session. If you attended, I sent out the recording. In fact, thank you, Libra season for energizing my own chart <laughs> and kicking me into the executive functions made up Made up some admin I was very behind on on Sunday. Uh, least favorite task. Least favorite task. But now now I'm ready to get the new assistant on board because I've got it in a place where it's not a mess. I don't want to do that to anybody. But like, oh, here, here's a mess. Untangle it. So, but yeah, it's a wild week, guys. And it's just the energy is going to keep building. Um, I'll talk a little bit about Tim Walls on the show today. Uh, I believe I have his chart rectified pretty well. I believe he's a cancer rising. We don't have a birth time for him, but he was kind of easy to rectify. Just watching the way he deals with kids and animals and how he holds them um, is very cancer energy. Um, and he's spicy. And he's spicy and people are like, yeah, but he has all those Aries placements. Yeah, he does. And Cancer is spicy too. All the cardinal signs are spicy in their own way. But we'll talk a little bit about him because we're going to talk about the debate for the vice presidents on October 1st. Found it a little bit interesting timing because the second is the solar eclipse slash new moon. Although that new that solar eclipse won't be visible very many places. And remember, an eclipse is only an eclipse if it's visible where you're at. But um, I, I think Walls will be a little spicy. Hopefully, he's not too spicy. I, I think um, J.D. Vance is a sneak. He's, a, he's an Eddie Haskell. If you've ever seen Leave it to Beaver, he's a sneaky sneak. So, but we'll see. We'll see. So that's some of what I'm going to talk about today. And of course, give our newest patrons a big shout out because we are a fully listener supported podcast. Um, I started something new. I don't know if you caught it, but I'll be doing like a seven to 10 minute update at the end of the week, just to remind you of all the craziness that we have happening. Cause I know my podcast could go a little long. So I just give you the cliff notes. Um, I started that last week 
and this podcast is listener supported, I'll probably run ads on the short segment. Um, I'm just trying out a few things, just trying some new stuff, just trying some new stuff. So let's see how what happens with that. Um, I'm very proud of us being listener supported. So no ads on this podcast that comes out every single Monday. Oh, we have comments available on Spotify. You're always welcome to leave a comment and I will make sure I check them and respond to them if necessary, or at least publish them. Um, people have been asking me about the housing market a lot and I really, I don't think we're going to see stability in the housing market for a little while yet. Um, probably not for another two years, but I think in fact it's going to rock and roll in 2025. It's going to be a little interesting. Um, the whole world's going to be really interesting in 2025, which is one of the reasons I'm going to be doing kind of like a weekly update. That's a shorter, like super short. This is super long. That'll be super short. Um, because we're just, we just have so much going on guys. So much going on. It's crazy. Don't fear, don't fear the reaper on this one, guys. So there's that. Alrighty. So I don't know what we're doing together today, but let's just take it easy. We've got the moon and Gemini starting off the week. Um, so again, people are going to kind of have a need for speed or communication. Um, we could see some interesting accidents as the moon heads towards Jupiter, um, and is still in, you know, it'll square off with Saturn first. So that'll probably be more towards the evening. And, uh, yeah, it'll definitely be towards afternoon, evening. Let me take a look here. On the 23rd. Yeah. So actually almost around noon time Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. So as your commute begins, um, the beginning of it around 3 p.m. on the East Coast, get ready for some wild and woolly action. We could see some stuff go down on the five. Um, this could just be erratic driving, people doing what people do, a high speed chase. We could see stuff like that. But uh, I'll I'll go through, I'll do the segment where I go through the headlines out of the Awake Space Astrology magazine. So every single month I put out the magazine. October's is going to be interesting. It's not going to come out on the first or second. I'm going to be out on the third um, because it's chock-a-block full of information because October is just a really wild month. But if you're a magazine subscriber... I got you that new moon intention setting guide for the October new moon. Cause I knew I was running so late on the September issue. That energy of this summer was just really weird. Um, and so it was kind of like swimming through cement, wasn't it? And so I made sure that you guys were ready for the new moon on October 2nd in the September issue of the magazine. So if you're a new patron at that level, or you've gotten a copy of the magazine, don't forget your new moon intention setting guide is in that. Just getting like taking care of business together. Aren't we? And then you guys have asked me about that mini moon and, and what impact it has on astrology. And so I'll be talking about that a little bit as well. It's a wild week. <clears throat> I am going to warn you, there's a lot of people who claim to be psychic <laughs> on the interwebs. They love to give doom and gloom prophecies. Um, and I think people like to be scared, you know, or have the thrill. That's why horror movies exist, etc. cetera. But um, 90% of that stuff isn't, isn't going to be much. I want you to keep your eyes out for more seismic activity. And am I glad I was wrong on the date spread for a large earthquake in the desert in Southern California? Yes, I am. I told you guys before, I'm okay being wrong about things. Um, I was right about magnitude 
there was a 6-5, and it was up more towards British Columbia in that time period. Um, didn't rattle any land, really. So didn't do any major damage. So yay. So glad about that. <clears throat> but I do, like, if, again, the Mexico, um, in Mexico or impacting the U.S.-Mexico border, I still am watching that. Okay, guys. Um, still watching that as Mercury slides through Virgo and is still, it's going to be trying, um, Uranus this week. We could see some real communications disruptions as we get into the, like the 25th of the month. Um, let's take a look. Yeah, actually the 23rd, 24th, the 25th, we've got um, Mercury at the last degree. It's in a trine with Pluto and Uranus. It's in a grand trine. Um, boy, and the moon will be conjunct Mars. I think we could see some uh, some mass violence that day. And that could be anywhere in the world. This could be a terrorist attack. This could be a resistance attack. This could be um, crazy people shooting people up. Um, it could be a school shooting. It could be an issue with domestic violence. <clears throat> and this, it, it's global. So just keep your eyes out. Be careful in public spaces. Um, listen to your intuition. On a positive note, um, you could have a really good food that day. Okay. If you're cooking, you may just cook the very best thing you've ever cooked. All right. Remember, energy expresses in spectrums. So there's it it there's always it's it's never just a ubiquitously bad day, and it's never a ubiquitously good day. I always like to use the example of the airport. Back in the day when you could walk into the airport without having to go through layers and layers and layers of security. You could sit at the gates and watch people come and go. I know young people, I know you don't remember those times. They were good times though. And um, anyway, people could be having the best day of their life. They could be reuniting with loved ones. You could see the coolest reunions. You could also see some really sad people, people leaving people they loved very much and making big life changes or people grieving. Um, people who've just lost a job, people who are going on vacation and, and just the gamut of human emotions all on a singular day. So it's kind of like in the tale of two cities. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Both can be true at the same time. Decide where you want to put your attention. Okay. So it's, it's a wild week. I know there's people talking about, you know, a tidal wave hitting California. I think we could see some real big tides, um, as we move towards the new moon, but not at the new moon. So like all this week, you know, the moon is pretty, pretty active. Um, the 26th in the, in the evening time on the East coast around two or so Pacific, we could see some big bada boom stuff going on too. Probably to do with things um, in Asia. Could be Asia. We could hear some news coming out of California. Is it seismic activity? It could be. Um, but it could also have to do with businesses, CEOs, um, leaders, different leaders in different political parties. Um, Trump's going to continue to be under pressure as we go along. But yeah, it's a wild week. Just very volatile. So you'll hear my predictions a little later on when I go through what I wrote in the magazine. Um, <laughs> because <laughs> hell, if I remember, um, I, 
I predict so much every single day, whether I'm doing readings or catching somebody up that I know or doing TikToks or TikTok lives. So you have TikTok lives. I had a great joint live with Astrology Blitz. Um, if you don't know who, you can just look up Astrology Blitz. He has 60,000 followers. How do you te- tell if an account is real or not? You look at their follower account. So Astrology Blitz has about 60,000 followers. Go follow Astrology Blitz. He's a great astrologer. Um, He's a real one. Had a fun, um, had a fun live stream with him. Never met him before. Our audiences really, they asked for it. So we did it. Um, Had a good conversation. You can hear us geek out about astrology together. Um, Do we absolutely agree on everything? No. Um, But we're both coming from similar traditions, you know, and that's, that's the fun part. I'm not going to refute somebody's interpretation um, on a technique that I know is considered a standard technique. You know, even if we think of it differently, that's fine. That's just being human and seeing things through different lenses. And then there's just bad astrology out there. So in the effort to make sure there's good astrology out there, um, go support a good astrologer, um, his name is Astrology Blitz on TikTok. I will get that live stream up into the Patreon. Part of my technical difficulties over the weekend was I couldn't download anything. You know, that's why I updated drivers. And anyway, <clears throat> lucky us. Anyway, I'll eventually get it up into the Patreon. <laughs> So speaking of Patreon, um, the Awake Space Patreon is what funds this podcast and other activities, and we are 100% listener supported. So make sure you think a patron, you can leave a comment if you're in, listening on Spotify, and you can be like, hey, thank you, patrons. Um, there's that. So why don't I thank some patrons in this next segment here? All right. You heard the music. Here's our newest patrons. We have Shani and Matt or Shani and Matt eat soccer. Smokey Whaley, Darcy, Brandy, K. Haynes, 777, Katrina, Lauren, Mariella, Jay, Dar, Catherine, Destiny, Blair, Sarah, Granny's, Granny's Hanny. Oh, Granny Shanny. Sorry, I read your name wrong. <laughs> Granny Shanny, Janie, Tara, Jan, Fran- Ches- Francesca, Bookslet, great name, Caroline, Bovary, Maria, Amor, Brooke, Kim, Islas, Barbara, Dana, Jessica, Jen, Ms. HLP, Laura, Mandy, Brenda, Cindy, Taya, the daughter of Mars, 222, Amber, Alex, Heather, Amber, Ms. Misbehaven, ER, Jennifer, Eastling, Sky, Meredith, Abby, Lorianne, Mindy, Carla, Nikki, Aaron, E.G., Nika. I know I'm not saying that right. You can let me know. Uh, Amanda, Shauna, Aaron, Kathleen, Carolyn, Trista, Laura, Andrea, Jenny, Ashley, Cheryl, Megan, Manuel, Diane, Laura, L, Peach, Jillian, Mariah, Lisa B, Samantha, Tina, Kimberly, Petrina, Lori, Soledad, Adriana, E.I., Robin, Kristen, Tabitha, Lemon Biscuit, Megan, Brittany, Abigail, Cassandra, C.W., Lauren, Meredith, Elizabeth, Courtney, Christy, Jacqueline, Isaac, Kay, Joy, Loretta, Letha, Kay, Mamasaurus, Christina, Fiona, Mel, Hope, Michelle, D87, Nickel914, Amy, Tanya, Mariana, Chandra, Manuela, 
Fire Breather, Mary, Katie, Jessica, Ashley, Kimberly, Megan, Danielle, Katie, Renee, Tanika, Jackie, and Spencer somehow knows. I want to thank all of our newest patrons. Speaking of Patreon, I'm going to be doing something new with the astrology cute astrology crew, which is our $33 tier where people who are a little more into astrology have access to the planet of the month library through the planets. And then of course we're going through the houses uh, in 2024 and next year we're going to be doing some uh, shop talk. I'm going to have more videos for you guys to watch as I put things up. We'll look at transits probably and have conversations around those. But I already have my astrology Q&A library, well, metaphysics, that any patron can submit questions to our googly form for, well, supporting patrons from the $5 level and up. And yet the astrology crew is for people who are a little bit more into astrology. They've got a little more working knowledge. So we're going to do the astrology crew pod and answer some more in-depth questions. I just got the googly form up for everybody. So you can put your questions in there and then we're going to do it like anybody who wants to be part of the podcast that's in astrology crew we'll do like a random name generator and we'll have surprise guests every week now this won't be a public podcast this will be a patron only uh, piece of exclusive content so we can build an astrology crew library full of really good yummy stuff and i think we're also going to have a lot of fun with it because it's just us right it's just the gang we don't have to worry about thousands upon thousands of strangers listening in to us do our strange and weird shop talk so i know it can be really intimidating right it can be really intimidating to be in public view i know it it has been for me and i know you wouldn't believe that cuz i seem really really comfortable and that's a lot of practice but um i'm actually really shy so it took a long time to get over being shy. So don't let that stop you folks. But I just thought it'd be fun to do that in our Patreon tier. Um, so there's that. I don't, I, I don't know about my reading schedule. I haven't looked to see if I have any openings. So people are still snabbing stuff in December. So if you've been looking for a reading, you can go to wokeastrology.com and go find readings there. There are isn't a lot of space in 2024. I'm not opening up my 2025 calendar um, until later in the year. So I'm going to be doing some coaching programs starting in October. We're doing a six week coaching around using your astrology to heal the money wound. Yes, I've taught it as a class. This is a six week coaching program where we're going to really focus on the healing versus the wounding and give, give you like practical things you can do with your own astrology, knowing that moves mountains. Alrighty then. I think we should talk about the, um, the mini moon. Let's talk about the mini moon. So the mini moon, it is, and it isn't a big deal. It isn't a big deal because mini moons come and go all the time because it's it's not really a moon. It's a little teeny tiny asteroid that's going to be in, orbiting the Earth from now until November 25th. It's, um, it's itsy bitsy teeny tiny. But I thought it was really interesting timing because the last time we had something like this happen, happened in 2020. And we had extraordinary astrology in 2020. And that's what really kicked off. I mean, kicked over the massive systemic change, right? That's what started the Jenga tower falling. It was being weakened since 2008 when Pluto entered Capricorn, right? We, I knew massive systemic change was happening. Most people didn't notice though, because your average daily life wasn't as disrupted. So, We've got Mars moving into opposition with Pluto in October. It's really starting around the 17th, 18th, Mars will be in orb of that opposition and Pluto will be direct on October 11th. 
This is the most intense time of 2024. And here's this little asteroid helping things out. I think it's symbolic of of the the hair that broke the camel's back. You know, that saying, it's always the little things that tip us over. It's not the big things, right? If you've ever like been in a bad relationship and you're always fighting and then something little happens, like it's not the big ones, like they were shithead on your birthday or they didn't pick up their, um, the laundry or they expected you to do all the housework. Like you knew the big problems, but it might've been like they didn't pick up their socks and that took you over the edge and that's why you left. Right. Or that's why you kicked them out. You'd be like, God damn it. They didn't pick up their socks. There was so many other bigger problems. And I kind of viewing that little mini moon kind of to hold that kind of energy. You know, just, it's that little one last thing. And I think that's, we're going to just be watching. I think it's just symbolic of the whole Jenga tower falling. Um, which we're going to see more and more people who held positions of power under a great deal of strain. We've seen a lot of CEOs leave their positions. I had that in my predictions. A lot of that surrounding the P Diddy situation, but it's bigger than P Diddy, you know? Um, so, and if you want to know my thoughts on that, you can head over to last week's uh, patron only podcast where I did a video presentation of P Diddy, uh, Donald Trump, Kamala Harris, Joe Biden, and Taylor Swift, because I'm a little concerned about uh, Swift safety, to be honest, and the safety of people going to concerts in October. You couldn't have been, tell me you don't have an astrologer. <laughs> Taylor, call me. Okay. Because, yeah, those, those were not good timing. Okay, especially in those locations. If it's not going to be aggression, it's going to be weather in October. There's just so much water. But anywho, so the weather is going to continue to intensify. Temperatures can be up and down. They'll be very irregular. Um, we're going to see a lot of precip all over the globe, you know, and winds depending on where you live. Because any any time anything's making aspect to Jupiter and Gemini, it's just going to bring up a lot of big wind. So there's that. Um, <laughs> so that's my thoughts on the mini moon. Um, I'm going to read to you guys. Let me read you a story. I'm going to read out the predictions I've got for this week. And then we'll talk about... Governor Walls, who is Kamala Harris's running mate for the Democratic Party. And I'll talk about his chart and then I'll talk about what I see at the debates. But first, let's go through what's in the headlines. All righty. Here's what I see for this week, starting with the moon in Gemini, September 22nd through the 24th. Huge windstorms could be hurricanes, microbursts, tornadoes, sandstorms, unseasonable wind, multiple storms active in one region, mass shooting stopped or per, or prevented, poison, poisoning, or open, or sorry, or air quality, water quality, disgust. Massive car accident pileup issues on freeways or high speed rail, fall festival, school festival, political rally disrupted or canceled due to threats of violence or weather. That could be something to do with like Oktoberfest in Germany as well. Issues with commercial flights, airports, and air traffic control at, or employees at airports or airlines, rockets, satellites, ISS, and astronauts, meteorites, northern lights, and or space debris fall from earth, fall to earth, fall from earth. Boy, she's tired. Missiles, drones, and sneak attacks. And this could be obviously in Eastern Europe or in Israel, Lebanon's fight. Uh, major author, speaker, or thought leader in the news, new music released or pop culture icon shows up or performer exposed. 
international agreements or negotiations fail, governments in UK and France have problems with coalitions and or fail. Journalists or journalism in the news, secrets leaked or revealed from corporations or government agencies. Uh, documents discovered that cause scandal or shed light on an unsolved mystery. Oh, so let's see. Major manufacturer issues um, with recalls or has investigations into faulty parts, explosion in air, satellite fails or falls to earth, meteorites or shooting stars or some strange happening in the sky and or lights in the sky could include space station astronauts having issues. You know, the two that went with the Boeing thing, they're not alone. There's other astronauts up there. So, uh, Let's see. The moon is in cancer September 24th through the 26th. Uh, Populists, nationalists might clash with authorities, police or military issues with UK government, parliament or royal family. We could hear news about King Charles. Accidents on major roads, freeways or bridges. Issues with foodborne illnesses, especially listeria and salmonella. Uh, issues with dairy or dairy farms or dairy products recalled poultry eggs as well. Donald Trump's health or mental clarity suspect as he get or he gets bad news. Marjorie Taylor Greene could be under pressure. Big rain issues with rivers, floods, uh, floodplains, hurricanes, hail, big tides, high profile domestic violence case, fires, 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 fueled by winds expand exponentially major infrastructure destroyed or big failure of dams bridges or shopping center offshore earthquakes between uh, 5.5 to 6.0 south pacific indonesia papua new guinea mid-atlantic ridge i would also give south america to this and potentially mexico um, maternal health women's health child and family welfare is up in the news Water quality issues, environmental issues, and climate change. Water wars begin. So you might hear arguments over who owns water somewhere. Female presenting person of note in the news speaks out against current policies. Uh, Restaurants close. Issues with food supply and food processing plants. Sewers and septic systems. Water systems failures and contamination. Um... This could be to do with water means, um, water supplies of all kinds. Let's see. Uh, Erosion causing storm, hurricane, water spouts, big waves, tsunamis. Water spouts are like a water tornado. Uh, Banking and currencies under strain. Kamala Harris under pressure or personal safety at risk or her family's safety at risk. I'm actually more concerned about her husband's safety, believe it or not. Um, let's see. So the moon will be in Leo September 26th through the 29th. This is going to be dramatic. Forest fires, lightning strikes, arsons, and fires go out of control because of wind. A tropical storm forms into a hurricane. Big storms, tornadoes. Tensions erupt in the in the Straits of Taiwan or territorial waters of the Philippines, issues with Iran could be leadership and or actions taken with drones or missiles. Israel-Lebanon conflict expands issues with drones, missiles, and incendiary devices. Political leaders and heads of state under attack, assassination attempts, and it could be more than one attempt of more than one leader. Banking or currency crisis, major accident on an interstate or international railway or freeway trump's campaign may make an announcement or have a scandal terrorist attacks involving vehicles and drones internet disruptions issues with satellites cables and communications data breach and or payment gateway disruptions credit card payment systems or atms royalty in the news not just the united kingdom uh celebrity scandal fine financial or due to hedonism Mining accident collapse or issue with minerals, mineral rights and mining, solar flare or solar storm, typhoons, cyclones, winds, fires of all kinds. That's arson or natural. Uh, big tornadoes possible. 
That's what I've got for there. And then we end the month, September 29th through October 1st, with the moon in Virgo. The moon will be in Virgo. And so we've got a crisis or strike involving healthcare, hospitals, pharma, nurses, and doctors. Big storms cause large amount of damage on the ground. Harvests and harvest failures due to weather events or and or temperatures. Issues with com- communicable disease, epidemics and pandemics, viruses and bacteria. So I'm sure we'll hear about flus, etc. Uh, biological and or chemical weapons used and or discovered to have been used. Missiles, drones, and rocket launch could go wrong. We could see something hit where it shouldn't have hit or explode before taking off, that kind of thing. Issue with International Space Station and astronauts. <clears throat> Potential accidents involving faulty infrastructure, bridges, freeways, ports, and docks. Expect issues with supply chain, trucking, vehicles, and trains. Security issues for Kamala Harris and or her family could be in-laws. Offshore earthquakes over 5.8 in Asia, Pacific region, Indonesia, Taiwan, Pacific Islands, New Zealand, off the coast of Chile, Peru, Mexico, California, and Oregon. Potential in Japan and Alaska offshore as well, closer into Vancouver Island. Uh, Mexico has political unrest, issues with weather and or seismic activity, border crossings, issues with mountains and summits, and that could be like Hindu Kush region, that kind of thing. Attacks on judges and civil servants. This could be a physical attack. It could be a verbal attack. Um, this could be global. Um, immigration and customs matters. Global. Not just the United States. There's a lot of countries dealing with issues around immigration. Uh, rules, policies, and procedures under the microscope, under the microscope or breached without consequence. Assassination, assassination attempts global. A lot of you are asking about whether the government will shut down. I do not think the SAVE Act will be acceptable. I think if the government shuts down, it's going to be for like 48 hours. That will not help the cause of the people trying to impede government function. So, and you got to remember, there's 435 seats up for grabs. This might mess with Mike Johnson. The moon will be in Libra by the time the vice presidential debate happens. Um... And that leads me to wanting to talk about Tim Walls. So we're going to do that coming up next. By the way, did I mention that we have also a comet coming up in October as well? (laughs) Starting off with the solar eclipse. Though it's not visible most places, but still, and uh, it's a partial. It's not a. It's not like the great solar eclipse we had back in April, which was profoundly changing, and uh, it's it's showing a change in power dynamics globally since it was especially visible in the United States. Does it mean we're going to lose our power? Mm, there's a change in power, hopefully in the right direction. Because absolute power corrupts absolutely. So we need we need some things shaken up in the power dynamics on this planet. Um, is it fun to live through? Depends on who you are. Depends on how much you benefit from the power structures. And I'm all for a controlled change. I'm not a big fan of chaos. Because just like I've told you. You know, people who are like, burn it all down. They forget their house is going to burn down too. So I'm not a big fan of the let it all, let it all burn because it hurts everybody. But we're going to see a lot of shake, rattle and roll. So the comet is, is usually a comet in astrology. And if you hear rattling in the background, that's Malcolm chomping on some kibble. He's decided not to nap. Um, of course, while I'm recording. But anywho, um, when we have extra stuff going on in the sky, like the mini moon or a comet, 
traditionally astrologers didn't see that as a good thing because you have to remember traditionally astrologers work for the people in power and those types of visual things tend to bode ill for those in power meaning there tends to be a shake-up okay and so we could see a fair amount of world leaders either be deposed there could be assassination attempts there could be people stepping down there could be health crises um all of that is well within the realm of possibility in october october is going to feel like a, an entire decade my friends it's just going to be the month that keeps going so <laughs> So why don't we turn our attention to Governor Walls, Tim Walls, America's dad, um, which is really why I see him as a cancer rising. And people be like, Lori, cancer doesn't rule dads. It doesn't. <clears throat> Not traditionally, but it is. He's a nurturing man. And that's why I think he's a cancer rising. One of the reasons is his round face. He's always had a rounder face, even when he was young. Um, but also his working with kids, being a coach, wanting to raise things, you know, his emphasis on feeding people. Um, he, he doesn't have like the Capricorn rising chiseledness that you see in often in those considered, you know, cisgendered males. Um, He's got the rounder appearance. And so um, at the very least, he's a progressed cancer rising. But um, anywho, Governor Walls' chart. Let's take a look. Um, and I'll do a deeper dive for patrons. Um, let's see. Let's see. Was I, I took a break. You think I would have had the chart up, but no, I was thinking about that comment. So let's see. Oh, yeah, nobody's got a birth time for him. But when I took a look at his life and I took a look at the transits, um, I really put him at a cancer rising, which. <clears throat> really puts all that Aries pretty much up at the top of the chart. So he's a, uh, he's a fiery guy. I really think um, when I sat and I rectified his chart, which I don't have that one up on my phone right now, but I've kind of turned it <laughs> so that I can see it the way I drew it. I honestly think he has an Aries midheaven and his Mars is very close to that. He spent a very long time, um, in the military and as a coach. So he has a lot of leadership. He was, you know, was a principal, he was a teacher and then he's been in government and he, he shows some of the positive qualities of Aries. You know, when we think of Aries, we think of aggression or super impulsive and he can be a little impulsive. He gets really fired up. You can certainly see the Aries there. He's full of passion. And he has a certain naivete. Um, he, one of the things I love about Aries is there's this natural innocence to them. Um, they never really lose that innocence. Even if they've seen some shit, there's this innocence. They want to believe in some good guys. They want to believe that good guys win. Um, they want to believe that bad guys lose. You know, And it's... It can be black and white thinking, but there's this purity to it. And my little brother is an Aries and he has that kind of innocence in him that, that there's this purity there. And I'm not talking about purity culture, but it's just pure, you know, they're just pure. My brother still calls me sissy, you know, um, nobody else gets to call me that because it's irritating, but he gets to call me that even if it's irritating. Um, my concern on the debate is that the moon is going to be in Libra and it's going to be egging on walls as Aries placements <sighs> more like his Mars. So I think it'll be really easy for him to get heated up 
And I, I think they've probably been doing a lot of prep around that because JD Vance is a sneaky meme. And it will be really easy for Walls to go into hard because he would do better not to, you know, just kind of do the Kendrick Lamar wop, 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 fuck him up, <laughs> you know? Um, and he'd be better off letting JD Vance kind of hoist himself with his own petard. Um, Vance, Vance's chart isn't too far off Trump's chart. Um, in fact, they have very similar risings. Trump likes to surround himself with people like himself, although I don't think he and Vance like each other at all. Um, I don't even think they're strange bedfellows. I think they're just strange people um, and very, very narcissistic. So I'm very, very narcissistic. So... Um, and not just because they're Leo Risings. Leo Risings can be warm and generous and kind. My mom's a Leo Rising, so I am not dissing on Leo Risings. But they do personalize it. They, even my mom personalizes everything. Um, used to drive me nuts when I was a kid. Because she'd be like, why'd you do that? I wouldn't do that. And I'm like, well, I'm not you. <laughs> you <know? But laughs> that was some of our biggest arguments when I was a teenager and in my 20s. I'd be like, well, I'm not you, mom. I'm me. <laughs> so and she'd be like, that's impossible. I gave birth to you. Um, but yeah, so J.D. Vance, he's going to be a little bit sneaky. And he has some favorable things happening on the first. They're not all favorable but it's not his worst day. And, and so I think when I look at the charts, my only concern is that Walls is going to go for that coup de gras um, because it's just going to be so tempting uh, because JD Vance is just going to say so many dumb things. Um, watch Walls facial expressions. Cause he too doesn't have a poker face. I think, you're going to see a lot of like big eyed movements and shaking of the head. And he may even turn red a couple of times uh, because of the egregiousness of things that JD Vance is saying. So I'm just not convinced that, you know, walls is, uh, I mean that the debate is going, I, I think it'll be popcorn worthy and who will win it. Well, walls will win it. But he has to be careful as he speaks because when he's in the moment, um, he may miss a detail. He's got Venus and Gemini and he, I have Venus and Gemini and sometimes I misspeak when I'm impassioned. Okay. Like I might pick the wrong word or the word will be like the closest I can get to the word, you know, I'll be like, cause you know, it's conceptual, but you can get called out on fact checking for that. So um, I feel pretty good about it in general, knowing that Mayor Pete has been helping with the prep. The, the visual of Pete Buttigieg <laughs> pretending to be JD fans. <laughs> oh my God. If only to be a fly on the wall, the, those practice sessions. But um but that passion and that fire that Walls has, that that's all cardinal. You know, that's such cardinal energy because it's like, it's really about families. It's really about kids getting enough to eat. Um, it, it really is. There's no artifice there. It just really, really matters. And he, he kind of reminds me of my very favorite uncle, who was a Scorpio, um, who was a pastor. And I didn't agree on theology a great deal with my uncle. We held very different theology, even when I was a practicing Christian as a young person. But he lived his beliefs and he never turned anyone down. He always had small parishes. You know, he took small community churches and he built them and he helped people find jobs and he helped people find housing and nobody went hungry on his watch. And he was really a man of principle. And um, so even if I didn't agree on details, I always really admired my uncle for living his. Um, Cause that's, that's, 
an honorable thing. If you believe something and you're not being a hypocrite, then that's worthy of respect. So, and Walls kind of has that, my uncle had that dad energy. He always had the dumb jokes and made sure you had enough. And when I came back to the States, he was the safest place I could think to go. Like he was the safe space. And I knew it would take a herd of wild elephants to try to get through. And they'd never be able to get through my uncle to get to me and my kids. So, and Walls reminds me of that. So, um, I really think he was a good choice. As a political analyst, I was like, that was a really, really good choice. I get asked a lot, like, how do you have these conversations with people who are actual Trumpers? And you're not going to have conversations with them guys that they're not going to be swayed. You're not looking at swaying people who have really strong beliefs. Let Trump and Vance lose people on their own. They are they're They're losing people on their own. Um, There'll be information coming out in October that should erode their, their base further. Um, More egregious commentary, more interesting news, um, Vance has got some stuff coming up in mid October that isn't great for him. And then, um, Trump also October is not a good month for Trump. So Mars is moving through his cancer placements. That isn't inherently bad. So if you're a cancer, don't freak out. That's a lot of energy, but, um, but there's, there's just stuff. There's just stuff. And as Mars is moving into a trine with Saturn, um, that's energizing the square to Trump's, even though Saturn is retrograding, um, it's still square Trump's sun. So I still think there's a lot of physical strain on Trump. And I, I'm very convinced we're going to have a health crisis that will be indisputable um, as we get towards that uh, election day. Do I think it's going to off him? No, I've always said all along, I don't see him keeling over until maybe end of 2025, maybe 2026. Um, I don't think he has a ton of longevity, but I don't, I don't see him, see him keeling over. I see him facing some consequences. Um, another politician, another politician, I th- would be Netanyahu. And he's got some really screwed up stuff happening starting this week and so i haven't been able to decide like if he comes to physical harm or if he gets actually arrested or deposed or removed this week um him and some of his other cabinet members but him specifically and his solar return um if he lives to his birthday which is the 21st of october um, his solar return, when I was looking at it, um, it's a very litigious. So he's either in exile and dealing with legal matters, or he's dealing with a lot of legal matters. Um, and that could be those ICC charges on, on war crimes. Um, we'll see, we'll see what's going on with that, but it's not great for him. And he hasn't helped out Israel at all. You know, because the de- what's being done is going to have very, very se- severe consequences as we move through 2025 and 2026. It doesn't help anybody and not everybody is pro what's going on there. There are people who believe in a two state solution and that Palestinians should have their own determination it's not a it's not a majority of that population by any means, but there are those there that believe that and try to strive for that. Um, it's not it's, it, that whole area is just so unstable. And as somebody who's specialized in the region, um, and this isn't astrological, this is just me talking to you as somebody who's specialized in the Middle East. Back in the 90s, 80s and 90s, um, I've been watching U.S. foreign policy in the region ever since George W. Bush especially became president. 
um, be absolutely everything you shouldn't do. <laughs> like I, I would call representatives and senators and be like, guys, I specialized in this. You are making the worst possible decisions. This is destabilizing. This doesn't lead to anything good. It just, it, it hurts Americans, you know, the United States' national security. It destabilizes global trade. It destabilizes an entire region. It ruins cultures. Um, you know, it's, it, it's a humanitarian travesty and has been since we went into Iraq on false pretenses, we broke international law. So if you want to know why we're supporting the, they're defending themselves with a good offense, we've been using that since the early 2000s. And that's literally against the rules of war. (laughs) And so all of those rules are kind of out the window. And I can see why so many people have left the State Department um, in protest because it's not been good foreign policy. It was based on false pretenses. And, and so that same playbook is being used. Um, and what's sad is they say anybody who speaks like I'm speaking, they'll be like, well, then you support these bad guys. And it's like, of course you don't support people who, um, want to commit harm and travesty. And yet at the same time, people have a right to resist an, an illegal occupation. That's part of international law as well. And you can say a fact without condoning a behavior. Um, I'm a little concerned at the clampdown on people not being able to speak freely or without being very thoughtful and mindful and demure um, without being called you know, bigots or anti-Semites or, um, including people who are of the diaspora, um, when there's just actual facts that need to be addressed. And so it's, it's a concern to me as I watch freedom of speech be eroded in the West, um, when people are just fighting for humanitarian law to be upheld because if it can be breached in one direction, it can be breached in other directions. And, and it's a threshold we don't want to go over. And, and my concern has been the, so what attitude we'd seen from press secretaries, et cetera, on egregious situations to the point where it's like, why, why are they sensitizing us to seeing massive amounts of human loss of human life? You know, it's almost like they're getting us ready. People don't even consider, like, if I say it's a wild week, they'll be like, meh, it was just a week, you know, because we're so used to the intensity right now. Um, You know, people aren't as shocked by what used to be a big event because these big events have just kept coming. And um, that concerns me, you know, that people are so sensitized to it. And, you know, when I say, hey, crazy stuff was going to happen at the Republican convention and they were like, well, nothing happened. I'm like, you didn't think people putting maxi pads on their ears was a weird thing or even just taping a band, you know, a, a gauze bandage to their ear in solidarity with someone who maybe got crazed. Um, <laughs> like He didn't lose part of his ears, guys. Um, Yeah that wasn't considered weird, you know, and and that's a concern. Our threshold for the weird and strange is pretty high at this point. So get ready because October, October is going to have some big bada booms, you know? So anything weird this week is a setup in the energy for October. So how do you work with this? How do you work with the intensity? You can fight it or you can relax into it and just remember it is what it is. It is what it is. You know, we, 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 we don't want to shy away. And at the same time, you don't want to be consumed because then you can't take care of you and yours. Keep your eye out on the weather. Be as prepared as you can be. Have a crank radio. I've got a combo. I've shown it to you guys before. I got it off Amazon. It's a crank flashlight with a radio and a USB port. 
and an alarm. I didn't realize it had an alarm, like a SOS type thing. Yeah, it's very piercing. I accidentally pushed a button. <laughs> Found out. Yes, I did. F-A-F-O. Um, that was startling. I don't remember when I did it, but it, it scared half a dozen people. And so I'm like, oh, that did its job. It's got a very bright fat flashlight. I don't have great eyes and I need a lot of light. And that flashlight illuminates very well, even to my standards. So it'd be really bright to those of you with good eyes. Um, and no, I don't have a name, but you can just look these things up online. Google is your friend. If you have more questions about supplies or preparation or food prep. And again, I do as much food prep for yourself as you can. Keep an eye on food recalls. There's a lot of them going on. Listeria and salmonella are just, part of that is because we deregulated things. We're like, well, we'll let them voluntarily like report on themselves. Like that's ever a good idea. Um, So there's all of that. So do what you can as you can. That's what you can do. And then deep breaths, deep breaths. Um, That new moon, and I'll end you on a high note, that new moon in Libra is happening at about 10 degrees and of Libra. And so it's still in the first stick hand. So it's all about striking the balance. Striking the balance, making sure things are fair, negotiating terms. So you want to take a look when you're setting your intentions. And remember, they're probably not going to manifest right away, like two weeks later when it's a full moon. That You're probably going to see six months later. Okay. So you want to journal about it. You want to get clear about it. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to read through all the prompts, but because that's not fair to my subscribers, but um, I'll give you an example. Let me just pick an arbitrary one here. Let's see. Well, we'll just do it for Libra Risings. How's about that? Because it's their new moon. So for October, the Libra new moon is on October 2nd. And it's a solar eclipse visible in the Pacific Ocean, Chile, and Argentina. Treat this like a new moon on steroids before setting your intentions. Consider the questions below. Now, this is just just for Libra risings or, you know, people with 10 degrees of Libra in their first house. Um, What are you willing to lose to be your authentic self? What are you willing to lose? That's a journal prompt. What are you willing to do to show up as you're meant to be? Like the most often, what what are you willing to do for that? What story do you need to stop telling to allow yourself to fully express? And when are you truly confident and how does that feel? Be really honest with yourself. Don't just go like, I never feel confident. There's been a time, there's something you might do very, very confidently. Like maybe you know your way around the accessories at the department store, or maybe you're really good at making a chocolate ganache. Maybe you're really good at um, a sport or an exercise, or maybe you're good at TikTok dances. Um, Maybe you're good at making balloon animals. It doesn't have to be like the world's best writer or the the smoothest talker or the best salesperson you know so look at your confidence okay and with that i'm gonna love you and leave you because we're running really late and i need to sleep at some point and i gotta pop this sucker into the editing software and get the music tracks behind it and then get it up out to you. I want to thank you for listening to me. Um, I appreciate every single patron. Thank you so much for supporting the podcast. Keep your ears open for the seven minute update. It might be a little longer than that, uh, but keep your ears open. I'll be doing a short update at the end of the week to get you ready for the weekend as we head towards October of 2024. So if you're a patron, make sure you pop into the chat. You can do that through the app or um, through the sidebar of the Patreon um, web 
version. It's on the left-hand sidebar. You'll see it under community. That's where the chat is. And you can join us in our conversations. If you're in the astrology crew, give me those questions because we're going to have our first astrology crew pod. And it's going to be super fun. And we're going to enjoy it together. Alrighty, guys. Chat later.